Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. All right, so, let us continue our discussion on the properties of the Fourier transform. Let us look at the duality property of the Fourier transform, which is a very important and interesting property. So, what we want to look at today is the duality We have to look at the duality property of the Fourier transform. Okay. So, let us say x t and x f form a Fourier transform pair. So, we have x t and the Fourier transform is denoted by capital X f. Okay. So, this is our Fourier transform pair. This is our Fourier transform pair. All right. Now, using the inverse Fourier transform or from From the inverse Fourier transform, what we have is we have well capital X T is given as the inverse Fourier transform of X of F since they form a Fourier transform pair e to the power of j 2 pi F T d F. This is your inverse Fourier transform, correct? This is the relationship we have from the inverse Fourier transform that is small x of t is minus x minus infinity to ca infinity capital X of f e to the power of j 2 pi f t d f. Now, we have what we are going to do is we are going to do something interesting. We are going to interchange these variables t and f. Remember t and f are simply variables. All right? So, what we are going to do? We are going to replace t by f, f by t. So, we are going to interchange t and f. Okay. Because this integral remember it holds for all t and all f. So, now what we are going to do is we are going to interchange or let me just write it more clearly. We are going to interchange When we interchange t and f, what we have is x of f equals minus infinity to infinity capital X of t e to the power of j 2 pi f t 2 pi f t dt. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to replace f by minus f. So, what I will have is e to the power of j 2 pi f t will be becomes e to the power of minus j 2 pi f t. This becomes x of minus f. So, what I have is x of or let us write another step. This implies that x of minus f equals integral minus infinity to infinity x of t e power minus j 2 pi f t d t. All right. So, what we have done here is we have replaced f by replace f by minus f. And now, if you look at this integral capital X of t e to the power of minus j 2 pi f t d t integral minus infinity to infinity. This is nothing but the Fourier transform 
of capital F t. Right, correct. So, we had small x t with Fourier transform capital X f. Now, what we are saying is that capital X of t, correct, that is if you replace f by t, that is instead of the Fourier transform in the frequency domain, if you consider that as a time function capital X of t, its equivalent Fourier transform becomes small x of minus f, that is what was previously the time function, if you replace t by f or replace t by minus f, that becomes the Fourier transform of capital X of t. And that is the interesting result that we have that x of t, that is capital X of t is a Fourier transform pair with small x of minus f and this is the principle of duality, Fourier transform, duality of the Fourier transform. So, this is the principle of duality this is your principle or property of duality the property of duality of the Fourier transform. That is, if small x t and capital X f form a Fourier transform pair, then capital X f and then capital X t and small x of minus f also form a Fourier transform pair. Okay? So, this is the property of duality. So, if we know the Fourier transform of a signal capital small x of t, correct, capital which is given by capital X of f, we can alternatively also find Right, using the principle of duality, the Fourier transform of the time domain signal capital X of t. For instance, let us illustrate you this using an example. All right. So, let us illustrate this example for duality property of the Fourier transform, correct. All right. And we already know that if we have a pulse p t of t, its Fourier transform is given by t sinc f t, where sinc x is sin pi x by pi x. So, this is t sin pi f t by pi f t and we know this pulse, this pulse is a square pulse which is unity, which has unit height for t between minus t by 2 to t by 2. So, this is a pulse or rather rectangular pulse, correct. This is equal to 1 for magnitude t less than or equal to t by 2 and 0 otherwise correct. This forms a Fourier transform pair this forms a Fourier transform pair. Now, what we are going to do is this is our x of t and this is our capital X of f. So, this forms our Fourier transform. Now, we are going to consider capital X of t that is by f we replace t. So, t sinc f t replace f by t. So, that becomes what does that become? That becomes t sinc that is the time domain t sinc t of t t sinc f t becomes t sinc t t and the Fourier transform of this is given by p t of replace p t of minus f that is Fourier transform of this is given by x of minus f replace t by minus f that is p t of minus f. Okay. And this is what we get employing the principle of 
that is from duality tells us the T sink of T times capital T has P T of minus f. Now, what we are going to do is just for convenience replace T replace the constant T by B, then what we are going to have B that is capital T is a constant, I am going to simply denote it by B. So, T sink B T has or B sink B T has a Fourier transform P B of minus f. Now, this pulse P B, remember this pulse if you look at this, this pulse which is 1 from minus t by 2 to t by 2, it is symmetric about the positive and negative that is it has an even symmetry right. It is that is p t of minus t is equal to p t of t. So, therefore, p t of minus f is equal to p t of f correct because it is symmetric about origin. So, this pulse notice that this pulse is symmetric. about 0, this is symmetric about 0, this implies P t of t equals P capital T of minus t. Therefore, P b of minus f equals P b of f and this P b of f remember and therefore, finally, we can write this as to just write it completely B sink B t has Fourier transform P B of f. Okay. And therefore, now we have an interesting result. Now, you can see that in the time domain you have B sink of B t that is B sink of B t of B t remember equals B at t equal to 0. So, at t equal to 0 this is equal to B and then it has a sign that is it is a wave with decreasing amplitude and remember the zeros occur at multiples of b that is 1 over b 2 over b minus 1 over b minus 2 over b so this is equal to 0 for t equals k over b where k element of any integer comma k is not equal to k is not equal to 0 all right. So, we have b sync b t remember at t equal to 0 this is capital B except at that position or all integer multiples of uh, all integer multiples of 1 over b correct that is at t equal to k over b all right this is equal to 0 because remember we said the sign this is in the numerator we have sign of pi b t and sign is 0 at all integer multiples of pi. Therefore, at t equal to any integer k over b this will be 0 and in the frequency domain what this result says in the frequency domain its Fourier transform is given by p b of f that is now if you look at the frequency domain the Fourier transform will be remember p b of f is a pulse from correct of height 1 pulse of height 1 from minus b by 2 to b by 2 this is your p of b of f. So, this is a pulse height 1 width equal to b in the frequency domain in the frequency domain correct. So, now we have used duality. So, what is interesting is previously we have seen a pulse in time 
has a Fourier transform which is a sink in the frequency. Now, what we are saying is a sink analogously the sink in the time domain has a Fourier transform which is given by pulse or a window in the frequency domain. And this is very interesting because it shows that this signal that is sink in the time has a Fourier transform which is limited in the frequency domain that is it is non-zero only in minus b over 2 to b over correct that it is bandwidth baseband bandwidth of w equal to b over 2 and it is 0 everywhere else. and this is therefore very relevant in the context of communication. The reason being in communication that is if you look at a communication. So, this if you look at this pulse pulse or window in frequency this is very important this is very important communication for instance all right for instance very important communication to generate band limited signals this is the important idea to generate band limited. What do we mean by band limited signals that is each for instance each cellular operator has a certain bandwidth over the which the operator which the which the cellular operator has purchased and over which the cellular operator is allowed to transmit all right. So, the, the cellular operator can transmit the signal that is only sp uh, spans that particular band right he is not allowed to that particular cellular operator is not allowed to transmit signals on a bands which are outside that frequency band this so therefore in uh, any communication any wireless communication one needs to re restrict the transmitted signal to certain a certain band a certain possible a certain band that is allowed for transmission the certain band that is licensed to that particular cellular operator or certain that certain band for instance in wi-fi that is an open band that is legal for that that in which one is allowed to legally transmit the wi-fi signal all right so one has to generate a band limited signal and this sync function in the time domain helps us generate the band limited signal all right so let us look at an application of this in gsm for instance let us look at the context of GSM. For example, this is an example in an example in GSM one needs to generate is need to generate a a band limited signal need to generate a band limited signal of bandwidth equals 100 kilohertz that is w equals b by 2 equals 100 kilohertz and therefore, what we have is we have the frequency domain the signal is spans from 100 kilo minus 100 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz let us say this amplitude is unity. So, we have p of b equals 100 kilohertz of f all right. So, this is the frequency in the and this is what we call as a band limited signal remember this is what we are calling as a band limited signal this is what we are calling a band limited signal because the signal is limited to the band minus 100 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz the energy or the power that is radiated in the band outside 
that is the out of band radiation that is the power that is radiated or the power transmitted in the band outside this minus 100 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz is 0. Therefore, it does not cause interference to other wireless systems or other communication systems or the signals of other cellular operators in bands that are outside this specified band. So, the out of band radiation is 0. So, this is a band limited signal all right. So, 0 power zero power in out of band. And what we have shown is that this signal if you want to generate such a band limited signal then required time domain signal is B sync B of t which is basically your 100 kilohertz sync 100 kilohertz times time. So, now for the GSM if we want to generate band limited signal correct with B by 2 equals 100 kilohertz. Now, I can conveniently employ the duality property and this signal which is 100 kilohertz times sync B sync B T this will give me the band limited signal which is band limited to 100 kilohertz that is P B I am sorry this has to be P I am sorry this has to be P B. So, this B uh, is basically your 200 kilohertz correct. So, B is equal to 200 kilohertz bandwidth w equal to 200 kilohertz. Uh, so, band limited signal of bandwidth uh, correct 100 kilohertz. So, what we have is B equals 200 kilohertz. So, this is P B of 200 kilohertz. So, this will be your B sync B T which is basically 200 kilohertz sync 200 kilohertz B by 2 is 100 kilohertz. So, again 200 kilohertz sync 200 kilohertz that will give me this P 200 kilohertz of F all right. So, this is the signal that is band limited this is your band limited So, this is basically the band limited that is basically what we are saying is the transmitted power or trans radiated power belongs to a certain band and it is 0 outside the band. So, that it does not cause interference to the other devices or other operators and therefore, it is very important in the context of communication all right with the sync signal in the time domain which is a band limited signal all right ok. And so, that is an example for basically the duality property the duality property of the Fourier transform. So, that is an important application of the duality property of the Fourier transform. And now, what we can what we are going to do is look at another very important principle of communication that is the transmission of a signal through a linear system. So, what I would like to do is look at the transmission the transmission of a signal through a linear system all right. So, what we have is basically let us consider a signal let consider a signal x t given as an input 
to a LTI where LTI denotes basically a linear LTI denotes a linear time invariant system. This system, this system has uh, is very relevant and very important as for signal processing and communications. All right. So let me just briefly describe what is an LTI system. An LTI system. follows two properties that is linearity, linearity and as the name implies time invariance correct. What is the linearity property that is if x t gives output y t that is x 1 t gives output y 1 t that is your input x 2 t or x 1 t gives output y 1 t x 2 t gives output y 1 t then if the system is linear, then A times x 1 t plus B times y 2 t gives an or B times x 2 t. gives an output A times y 1 t plus B times y 2 t that is linear combination of inputs produces the same linear combination of outputs. produce the same linear combination of of the corresponding outputs. That is if input x 1 t produces output y 1 t, input x 2 t produces output y 2 t, then if I give a linear combination of the inputs that is a times x 1 t plus b times x 2 t, then the, you observe the output is given by the corresponding linear combination of the outputs that is a times y 1 t plus b times y 2 t. This is the linearity property all right. And then the time invariance which is basically if x t gives output y t, then x t minus x t naught that is time shifted input gives that is if you have the time shifted input gives time shifted output that is output is shifted by that is the output is shifted by t naught. That is if the input is time shifted by x t minus t naught correct, it can be delayed by t naught or it can be advanced. That is if t naught is negative then it is an advance in time correct. Then the output is similarly time shifted that is y t minus t naught. That is for every x t that is if x t gives an output for any input x t if the output is y t 
if the input is shifted by t naught that is x t minus t naught, the output is y t minus t naught, right? The output is simply a time shifted version of the output corresponding to the uh, corresponding to x t, then this system is known as a time invariant system. Such a system is known as a time invariant system. This is known as a this is known as a time invariant system all right so this system if this prop system follows this property that is a x 1 t plus b x 2 t gives rise to a y 1 t gives output a y 2 t a y 1 t plus b y 2 t and x t minus t naught gives output y t minus t naught that is if the system follows linearity and time invariance that is linear follows the linearity property such a system is known as a linear such a system is known as a linear time invariant or LTI system. That is if the system follows the linearity and time invariance property, then this system is known as an LTI system or a linear time invariant system. All right. So, what we have done in this module is we have looked at the duality property of the Fourier transform. All right. We also looked at an example of the application of the duality property of the Fourier transform and a simple application in generating band limited signals in a communication, a practical communication system. And also we have started our discussion on linear time invariant system. So, we will stop this module here and continue with other aspects in subsequent modules. Thank you.